Hello and welcome to BBC World News. We begin with breaking news this hour. Pakistan says it has shot down two Indian aircraft, which it claims were over Pakistani airspace. The Pakistani military also says its warplanes carried out airstrikes inside India. India says the Pakistani jets were forced to retreat by its own aircraft, but has not confirmed whether any of its planes were shot down. Well, details are still emerging, but a spokesman for the Pakistani Armed Forces, Major General Asif Ghaffour, has tweeted this. He says that in response to Pakistan Air Force strikes, the Indian Air Force crossed the line of control, the LOC, in Kashmir. He goes on to say that Pakistan shot down two Indian aircraft inside Pakistani airspace. One of the aircraft fell on Pakistan-controlled Kashmir, that's written here as A, J and K, and the other fell inside IOC, that's how Pakistan refers to Indian-controlled Kashmir. He finishes by saying that one Indian pilot was arrested by Pakistani troops on the ground. Well, let's get more now from our correspondents in Delhi. Sangeeta Maiske, I'm from Islamabad. I'm joined by Sukunda Kamani. Let's go to Sukunda Kamani first. Welcome to you. Tell us exactly what we know has happened and what we're hearing from the military, Sukunda. So I've just come out of a, a briefing, a press conference by the Pakistani military. Uh, the Pakistani military spokesman broke down uh, the chronology of these dramatic events that took place today. According to him, uh, this began when Pakistani uh, jets from within Pakistani airspace targeted uh, Indian uh, positions within India across the border. As a response to those uh, strikes, he says that Indian jets crossed over into Pakistani airspace and Pakistani uh, planes shot down two Indian jets. As a result of that, he says, two Indian pilots have been taken into custody. Uh, there had been some reports in Indian media that a Pakistani plane had been uh, shot down by Indian forces. The Pakistani military has said uh, that is not true. Uh, now, I asked the Pakistani military spokesman if these actions by Pakistan in, in targeting, uh, in carrying out these strikes uh, across the border in India, were pushing the two countries to the brink of war. Uh, he said they weren't. He said that Pakistan had acted responsibly, and he said uh, Pakistan had deliberately chosen not to hit Indian military targets or uh, areas where civilians were living in India, but open ground uh, just across the border in India. And he said that the Pakistani military did this because uh, they wanted to act, in his words, responsibly. They don't want the situation to escalate further. But certainly th these developments will cause huge concern amongst the international community and in the region. Well, that's the explanation from Islamabad. Let's go to Sangeeta Maisko in Delhi. What's the Indian reaction been, Sangeeta? Well, what's very interesting, Samantha, is that given the gravity of Pakistan's allegations, uh, officials here in Delhi have yet to issue a response. Uh, the only person we've heard from uh, is uh, Sushma Swaraj. Now, she is India's foreign minister, and she's currently uh, holding talks with the Chinese uh, abroad. Uh, she issued a statement this morning simply reiterating, really, uh, what has been a long-standing position of uh, the Indian government, which which is that uh, they only take action uh, against uh, Pakistan-controlled territories uh, when they are trying to crack down on militants who are, attemp uh, are attempting to destabilize India. And she said that the Indians are in no way looking for an escalation of tensions. So from both sides saying they're not looking for an escalation in tensions. But Secunda, just explain the chronology over the past few weeks of where, how we've got to this point. That's right. This all began uh, around two weeks ago when uh, a militant group carried out a suicide bombing in uh, Indian-administered Kashmir. Now, the militant group that claimed responsibility for this uh, has a base in Pakistan and uh, has, uh, according to, to a number of observers, in the past at least, had strong links to the Pakistani intelligence services. That led Indian authorities to blame uh, not just this Pakistani militant group, but uh, effectively the Pakistani state for being involved in this attack, which led to the death of uh, around 40 Indian troops. As a result, uh, yesterday, Indian, uh, the Indian Air Force crossed over into Pakistani airspace and carried out some attacks. 
they said they targeted uh, a base of this militant group. Uh, they said they killed a number of militants. Uh, eyewitnesses on the ground in the Pakistani military seem to deny that. They say that actually uh, just a few civilian houses were damaged, one person was injured, uh, and there was nothing quite as dramatic as, as what India was claiming. This uh, response from Pakistan uh, that we've seen today is is really the latest in this uh, sequence of of unfolding events uh, of this conflict between these two countries. As Sangeeta, how serious an escalation do you think events of the past few hours really are for the two countries now? Well, just to set this in some sort of context, uh, India's incursion into Pakistani airspace was the first of its kind uh, since 1971, uh, which just shows uh, uh, the kind of serious consideration that the Indian authorities have been given, uh, giving their response uh, to that uh, terror atrocity that uh, uh, Sukunda was just referring to there. Um, this incursion of airspace is something that is really very very unusual. What you usually see is, a la is along the, uh, the, the line of control, which is effectively uh, the de facto border now in Kashmir between India and Pakistan, um, military exchanges between the two. They don't happen often, but they certainly do happen with some regularity. We saw those kicking off once more uh, last night. But what I would say is that this um, mutual ex exchange by which uh, both sides have um, infringed each other's airspace is certainly a significant uh, rise in tensions between those two countries. Uh, Secunda, how has it been seeing there in terms of whether or not this is as a crucial kind of breaking point for the two countries? Well, I think everyone uh, within uh, Pakistan recognizes that this is now a, a, a very, very serious situation. Let's not forget these are two countries that are both nuclear armed, uh, that have fought three wars against each other over the past uh, 70 years. Uh, the Pakistani, uh, there, there's, there's a, a pressure really, I think, on both sides to be seen to be uh, responding to, to each other's uh, attacks. So uh, there was a pressure on uh, the Indian authorities for them to respond to this uh, uh, attack by a militant group. We saw the Indian response yesterday. Uh, that response by India yesterday by coming into Pakistani airspace um, gave the, the Pakistani authorities the feeling that they needed to, to do something uh, in retaliation almost. And that's what we've seen today. So it's not really clear where exactly this will end. I think the fact that there are two Indian pilots in Pakistani custody is now very significant. The Pakistani army has released uh, images of these pilots. And it's not clear yet whether the, uh, the presence of these two pilots could further inflame tensions uh, with India or uh, India as a result might act with more caution because uh, these men are now in Pakistani custody. Sangeeta, final question to you. Just put this into context for us because this dispute has been going back all the way to 1947. Why is Kashmir this disputed territory? Why is it so important to both countries? Just quickly before I do that, just to pick up on Secunda's point, we've now had um, the international community reacting to what has been going on. So we've now had the European Union and the United States uh, calling for a de-escalation on both sides. And I think it's going to be important to watch what that international reaction is throughout the day. But just to go back, there have been tensions between India and Pakistan unfolding over Kashmir since 1947. Uh, when the British uh, uh, divided the subcontinent into India and Pakistan, Pakistan, uh, Kashmir was taken into the sovereign territory of India. At that point, uh, it was a Muslim majority state, as it is now, but with a uh, Hindu king. Uh, this made it typical of only two states in the newly formed India. Uh, ever since that has happened, Pakistan has disputed that the population there wants to be Indian. Uh, they have consistently claimed that they would rather have joined Pakistan. Uh, India, since that point, has um, uh, uh, as Sukunda said, uh, fought uh, three wars with Pakistan over uh, uh, Kashmir uh, and um, who should have final control of it. Uh, in the 1990s, the United Nations intervened and formed what's called the line of control. And what it did in effect was split Kashmir into two, give the Pakistanis half of it to administer, that's the northern part, and then the southern part was given to India to administer. That line of control, Samantha, is in effect a de facto border 
border between India and Pakistan. So when we see tensions rising, as they have done uh, since 1947, um, it is usually along that line, and that's exactly what we're seeing now. So this infringement of airspace has happened uh, just around that line of control, that de facto border. Okay, Sangeeta Maiska in Delhi and Sekunda Kamani in Islamabad. For now, both of you, thank you. And of course, we'll continue to update our viewers on any developments on that story as they come in.